O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Praise and thanks to God. Good morning. Welcome to our morning prayer for Wednesday, February 28th. The Bible lesson we're studying today that uses the number 40 also comes from the life of Moses, just like yesterday's lesson did. It's probably the one that many of you thought of when you first heard that this week we're going to be focusing on the use of the number 40 in the Bible. It's the account of how Israel came to wander in the wilderness for 40 years before they got into the promised land. It didn't take them 40 years because they got lost along the way. It only took between 15 and 16 months for the nearly 2 million Israelites to journey from Egypt to the edge of the promised land. As they stood there looking into the land, Moses sent out 12 spies to scout out the land before him, scouted out for 40 days. The spies brought back the report that the land was indeed flowing with milk and honey, just like the Lord had promised. But while Caleb and Joshua expressed that they should take the land because the Lord was with them, the other ten spies said, no way, we'll get destroyed. The people living in the land are like giants. And sadly, they succeeded in whipping up the rest of the people into doubting God's promise to give them the land. Instead, they wanted to choose a new leader and go back to Egypt, if you can imagine that. The Lord was ready to destroy the whole nation, but Moses interceded for the people on behalf of what the other nations of the world would say about God, that he wasn't able to deliver his people to the promised land. Numbers chapter 14, beginning at verse 20, says, The Lord replied, I have forgiven them just as you, Moses, asked. Nevertheless, as surely as I live and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one of the men who saw my glory and the miraculous signs I performed in Egypt and in the desert, but who disobeyed me and tested me ten times, not one of them will ever see the land I promised on oath to their forefathers. No one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to, and his descendants will inherit it. Since the Amalekites and Canaanites are living in the valleys, turn back tomorrow and set out toward the desert along the route to the Red Sea. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long will this wicked community grumble against me? I have heard the complaints of these grumbling Israelites, So tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. In this desert your bodies will fall. Every one of you, twenty years old or more, who was counted in the census, and who has grumbled against me. Not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. As for your children, that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. But you, your bodies, will fall in the desert. Your children will be shepherds here for forty years, suffering for your unfaithfulness, until the last of your bodies lies in the desert. For forty years, one year for each of the forty days you explored the land, you will suffer for your sins." 
and know what it is like to have me against you. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will surely do these things to this whole wicked community, which is banded together against me. They will meet their end in the desert. Here they will die. While it certainly may sound like the Lord cursed and abandoned the vast majority of the Israelites, remember the first verse that I read. The Lord forgave the people because of their sin. Those who recognized their sin and repented of it would still be able to enter the promised land of heaven when they died. But there were still going to be some earthly consequences for their rebellion against the Lord. They wouldn't ever see the earthly promised land. They would struggle in the wilderness for 40 years until all the people who were 20 years old and older in the census died there. Only their children would inherit the land. And yet the Lord continued to bless them during those 40 years of wandering. He miraculously supplied them with food and drink the whole time. Deuteronomy chapter 8 says the Lord kept their clothes from wearing out and kept their feet from swelling. God was with his people, even as they struggled in the wilderness. It's no secret that our journey through life is kind of like Israel's time in the wilderness. It's a struggle. It's full of sorrow and suffering because of sin. Sometimes that happens as a result of us just living in a sinful and fallen world. Sometimes it happens as a result of our personal sins, pride or doubting the Lord's promises or whatever. Thankfully, the Lord uses those consequences and his law in the word to bring us to repentance. He points us to Jesus and assures us that he has forgiven our sin. And like Israel, he shows us his grace each and every day by continuing to richly and daily supply all our needs. He daily reminds us of his forgiveness that gives us confidence that Unlike a big part of the Israelites, we will enter the promised land of heaven one day and live there for eternity. May God encourage you with that good hope today and every day. Amen. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Christ the life of all the living, Christ the death of death our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.